What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. Most people failing to heal their psoriasis do so because they do not put enough emphasis on the nuance and details of both the diet and the healing protocols themselves. Therefore, they end up following some cookie cutter program or taking advice for some random doctor online and they never heal their skin and they constantly spin their wheels getting frustrated and frustrated and even more frustrated. I was able to heal my skin and yes, I've been cured of eczema, dermatitis and psoriasis for over seven and a half years now because I hyper-focused on what my needs were and I really paid attention to the details and the nuance of the diet and the healing protocols that I did. This is not a debate. I'm not dissing Dr. Ken Berry, MD, and I'm not saying that his advice is wrong. What I'm saying is my experience curing myself, I had a very specific bank of knowledge. And I want to share that and compare that alongside with Ken Berry's video about psoriasis so that you guys can have a well-rounded picture of what choices are out there and the details and nuance of what it takes to actually heal. If you have psoriasis, the problem lies in your immune system and in your immune system's inappropriate response to things in your skin. So in his intro, he says it's not a skin issue, it's actually an autoimmune response issue. Nothing could be more honest and straightforward and truthful than that. Most skin disease sufferers are clueless. They think it's a skin issue, but psoriasis is not a skin disease. It's an autoimmune disorder that shows up as a digestion and gut and lymphatic issue. That's why when you are going to cure skin disease, you have to address the digestion and the gut health with diet and you have to address the autonomic nervous system with meditation, breath work, or some type of protocol directly to heal. But just because your genes load the gun, only what you put in your mouth and put in your environment can pull the trigger. And so you may have the genetic predetermination to, to, to have a tendency towards psoriasis, but your genetics are by no means a guarantee that you will have anything more than the mildest uh, psoriasis with a tiny plaque somewhere, which is easy to hide. The next thing Dr. Berry brings up is he says there's a genetic component that can be turned on by your environment. This is absolutely true. I've had the same experience. My family has the genetics of psoriasis and dermatitis and skin disease. If my mom eats really shitty, she'll get a little psoriasis on her nose. My aunts and uncles kind of the same way. We are sensitive ginger folks. But if you never have the lifestyle that turns on the genetics of psoriasis in the first place, you don't really have to deal with it. You can use the seven things below and you won't have to take these very, very expensive and potentially quite dangerous prescription medications anymore. Don't weaken your immune system with biologics and all sorts of other pharmaceutical drugs. I can't tell you how many people come to me each week saying, Rob, I was on Dupixent for the last year and now all of a sudden I have some issue with my liver and my eyes are all messed up and my dermatitis and my psoriasis got even worse. I hear this all the time. To heal your body, you can't suppress the symptoms. You have to address the root issue heal it, balance it, and then the skin disease, the surface area symptom will go away. But if you use drugs, and those drugs address the symptom only, but they don't take away the root issue, the psoriasis will never be cured. It will just always be there. Now, let's get into the seven things you need to avoid to improve your psoriasis. So first and foremost is tobacco products. Whether you smoke them, dip them, chew them, or whatever else you do with them, they cause inflammation. Tobacco is a skin disease killer for sure. Also, you gotta be careful with the smoke of marijuana. If you enjoy the medicine, you gotta try to eliminate the heat and the smoke that it produces to get it into your system. Number two is sugar all sugars. Long-term sugar will absolutely mess you up and it will lead to your skin not being very good. For me, I started off vegan, eating a lot of fruit and a lot of grains, 
and the sugar caught up to me. It started to create hormonal issues, brain fog issues, teeth issues, calcium issues, omega issues, major, major issue, issues. When I stopped using sugar, when I reduced my sugar to a very low point, I saw immediate and huge results in a response. Avoiding all grains has helped some of my patients markedly improve. I ate grains during the healing portion of my eczema and dermatitis and psoriasis. They did not do me well. When I removed the grains, I had a much faster and easier time healing. My clients experienced a very similar result. I would avoid all alcohol products, especially beer and wine, but you may, you may even have to avoid the hard liquors and just be a teetotaler if you want your psoriasis to be virtually non-existent. Alcohol, that's a no-brainer. Of course, I agree with that. Next is number five, seed oils. And so these are oils that are chemically made in a factory from things like rapeseed, grapes, grape seeds, uh, safflower seeds, sunflower seeds. And so the oils you should avoid are canola, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, um, seed oils, they are the devil. I agree with that. Good job, Ken Berry. Baby, I used to drink a gallon of milk a day back when I played football in school. And I thought it was going to make me have big muscles and strong bones, but all it really gave me was dandruff and allergies and a runny nose all the time. Get rid of all the dairy. And now let's be clear about this. It's not the fat in dairy that's causing the inflammation in your gut and your skin. I have found that there's a huge population out there of skin disease sufferers with psoriasis who can do really well on goat dairy products. Now, Goat milk, mm, not so sure, but goat butter and goat yogurt and goat kefir, especially the goat butter, is working really awesome for me personally and many of my clients are doing great on it. The goat butter, if you can handle it, is an awesome hack for getting lots of fat and lots of calories on a keto or a carnivore diet, which a lot of people that I work with struggle with. And the one you may have never heard before is nightshades. Nightshades is a, is a kind of plant, and it includes potatoes, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, tomatillos. What's going on with these? What are nightshades? And then eliminate them from your diet. And nightshades. And you might be surprised because of my old videos. I used to eat some potatoes on a regular basis. But the potatoes do work for me. So he says you should avoid nightshades I have had the experience that nightshades from person to person really don't cause many issues. Now, tomatoes and eggplant, that's an entirely different story. I would avoid those foods. They don't work for me. They don't work for a lot of my clients. But sweet potatoes and potatoes tend to be a carbohydrate source that a lot of people can handle and handle pretty well. And if you're someone who needs a little bit of carbohydrate so that you don't lose weight, so that you can have more energy, or because a carnivore or a keto diet specifically doesn't work perfect for you, then I think potatoes can actually be a pretty good choice. Sweet potatoes and squash are obviously more, more effective and better, easier to digest, and just a better quality food. But this would be kind of the main area where mm, I semi-agree with Dr. Barry, but I also kind of say my experience is different. My experience with a lot of my clients who are healed is slightly different. So I wouldn't be overly concerned with the nightshade thing on this one when we're talking about potatoes. So as you can see, someone who has cured their eczema and been cured for almost eight years compared to what a doctor has to say. And as you can see, there's some pretty good parallels, but the details of the things that we agree upon are seriously the most important thing about this video. And they are what I hope you paid attention to during the last six to eight minutes of me shooting this. Remember, those people who struggle to heal their skin never focus on the details and the nuance of the diet and the healing protocols. It is essential if you're going to be someone who heals your skin like I have, you have to focus on the minute details of healing. The two that make the biggest impact is your diet and addressing the autonomic nervous system on a daily basis. So that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave all your comments and questions down below. If you'd like to get a hold of me to become a private skin health client, there's a link in the description box for a consultation. 
the three phases workbook, the skin disease reversal workbook, you can pick that up at holistichealthactivation.com. There's links below for everything. Remember to subscribe, remember to share, remember to hit the notification bell. Much love, I'll be back with many more videos really soon. Peace and thanks Dr. Ken Berry for your psoriasis video. You're a rad dude.